view. This has to do with rational functions. Remember, a function that's like a fraction. It says, what discontinuities did Polly find upon her investigation of this function? Now, there's a lot of things we learned we can do with this. Uh, discontinuities has to do with where, where x does not exist. You get those from the denominator. What we need to look at is if we can cancel any values here, because that will create a discontinuity. So I need a factor. On the top, or excuse me, the top is factored. The bottom, though, is not. So we can do the x method, which is a times c in the top and b in the bottom. My a is 1 here, so 1 times negative 6 is negative 6, and then my b is also 1, so I put 1 here. I'm looking for factors of negative 6 that add up to 1. In this case, I believe they are 3 and negative 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, but 3 minus 2 is 1. So I can factor the top by putting... Uh, you take this term and divide it in half, which means I'd have x plus 3 times x minus 2. And I would still have the plus 4 on the outside. So this is just another way of rewriting the equation. Now what we can do once we write it this way is we can see that these, fa these factors cancel out. Now a canceled out factor is a removable discontinuity. So when x, that value, I know it says x plus 3, but if you said equal to 0, you'd find that x equals negative 3 is a removable discontinuity, also known as a whole. And then the value that's left over here, when x equals 2, that's an infinite discontinuity because you're not allowed to divide by 0. If x is 2, we're dividing by 0 here. So that is an infinite discontinuity, which will provide a vertical asymptote. Uh, which is an asymptote. A vertical asymptote. And so I'll show you the picture in the graph so you can see what it looks like. If we went over from the start here, and I'll type in the equation just as it gave it to me originally. I would have the x plus 3 on the top over x squared plus x uh, minus 6, and then I have the plus 4 over here. Uh, over here at 2, we see that we do in fact have that vertical asymptote I was talking about. That occurs right there, divides it. Uh, I'll just show it to you. We said it was x equals 2, so if I type in x equals 2 here, and I drag this over to the x-axis, it'll just provide a dotted line. You can see that it does divide it. That's that infinite asymptote. And then we also have a hole at x equals negative 3. There should be a hole right there. Now, it doesn't show it here, but if we go to table, we can see. Press control T. And look, right here at 2, the infinite discontinuity is, any discontinuity will say undefined in our table. So we have that one at 2, and we also have it at negative 3. So it is, in fact, a hole uh, right here at x equals negative 3. There's a hole right there in the graph should be an open circle like that. And uh, furthermore, if we need to write the domain, I just want to point, remind you of this, you would never include something that's undefined. So you would go from negative infinity all the way up to that negative 3, and then from negative 3, we would go to positive 2, and from positive 2, we'd go to infinity. The parentheses, however, says do not include those values because they're undefined. So that's what types of discontinuity we had, and we also one other thing that the problem did not ask for but could be asked on the test is for a horizontal asymptote. And we could look here and test. It looks like it's at y equals 1, 2, 3, 4. If you're not for sure, let me take away the table. Sorry about that. Let me get that away from there. If I take away the table, I'll show you how we could, in fact, find the horizontal asymptote. It's the same way. We would just type in, we go to Menu, Actions, Text, and we could just type in, we think it's at y equals 4. Let's check it. If I type that in and then go to the graph, yep, it does in fact divide it right there. So that would be my horizontal asymptote if I need to find out is it y equals 4.